Hi, I'm Chef Todd Moore. Uh, I've devised my seven tips for eating healthy at home uh, because I feel like crap. I mean, I don't know why. I, you know, I eat really well. Uh, I exercise a lot. Uh, I mean, I was executive chef at a large hospital. I know how to cook. I know about nutrition, but yet I feel, still feel lousy. I mean, why do I feel so lousy? I mean, why am I exhausted by the television at 9 p.m.? Why do I sleep eight full hours and I still wake up tired? Why do I feel like I need a nap in the middle of the day? Why does my memory seem to be fading? Why am I irritable sometimes? Why does all this stuff happen to me? You might be asking the same questions. Well, I know I'm busy. I'm stressed and I'm busy. Everybody's stressed and busy. So you can use that as an excuse if you want. I can chalk it up to stressed and busy. Well, that's it. That, that's easy enough to explain. Okay, never mind. Goodbye. Uh, regretfully, uh, I don't think that's ever going to change. I'm always going to be stressed. I'm always going to be busy. I'm that kind of guy. I like being busy, so I can't blame the negatives on it. But how can I change the way that I feel better? And the answer keeps coming back to me. It's diet. And I don't mean diet like a, like a fad, bestseller diet, something that you do for a few days or a few weeks. I use the word diet like the uh, consistent sustenance, sustenance that they give to animals in a zoo. Now, I'm not comparing you to animals in a zoo, but somebody else controls that. They get specific things for their nutrient, for their diet. That is their basic diet. That's the thing that they eat every day. Diet is what you normally eat every day. It's not what you eat for a few weeks. And since food is fuel um, and I can control what I eat, I figure out I need to scrutinize my overall diet. I can't change the busy and stress. So these seven tips for eating healthy at home are either small changes changes or big changes that you can join me in making better improvements in our lives. Again, I'm healthy. I'm not overweight. I exercise a lot, but I found that these small changes can make a big difference in returning my energy, my wellness, and my mental acuity, being a little bit sharper rather than tired. So number one tip, uh, your grocery store choices. The items that you toss in your grocery buggy are, are going to be your week's fuel. I mean, do you use high octane fuel? Do you use low octane fuel. If you had a great sports car, you'd want high octane fuel. And many food writers and bloggers advise that you shop around the perimeter of the grocery store. That's where the vegetables, the meats, the seafood are. The interior aisles, the up and down of the store, contain the chips, the canned, the processed foods. The problem with the perimeter of the grocery store is that it can be more expensive. Calorie for calorie, that is, than the interior. Uh, food scientists design the interior aisles, things that are fractionated and put back together. Around the perimeter, those are natural ingredients. So one dollar of fresh produce, say you buy a, a bag of spinach, it's going to get you about 15 calories for your diet. But a bag of potato chips on the interior of the grocery store will get you 150 calories for the same diet. So you may say, hey, that's the deal. But is this more fuel for energy or is it fuel for money? Is it just cheaper fuel? You have to ask if you're fueling yourself on potato chips rather than spinach. It might cost you more money, but in the long run, your health is probably worth it. And I, I mean, I hate to sound really calloused, but what are you going to spend on medical treatments in the future? All right, might have overstepped my bounds a little bit. Choose whole foods when you go to the grocery store. Those with five ingredients or less on the label, preferably those with one ingredient on the label. Beef says beef. Spinach says spinach. If you're buying beef, get real beef. Spend the money for good, flavorful beef. Don't buy processed steakums and steak-like product and frozen beef substitute. Those have fillers. They have binders. They have things that are empty calories. They weigh you down. They pull your energy level down. You can't control either what goes into takeout and restaurant foods. Now, I'm a professional chef, so I'm not going to impugn restaurants, but their main objective is to make profit, is to make their business profitable. It's not to improve your health. Yes, there are health food stores, there are things like that, but to be more profitable, they're gonna sell you the comfort foods, the things that taste really good, the things that are wired for the pleasure principles in your brain. They're not looking for your health, they're looking for their profit. Now, you make the decision, it's not to say that they're bad, but you control the food in your kitchen. You don't control the food in a restaurant. 
buy foods as close to their natural state as possible and you'll have better results from what you eat. Number two tip, uh, use healthier cooking methods. Uh, all the other healthy eating tips are, are moot if you drown something in oil. I mean, if grandma showed you how to cook in two sticks of butter or pan fry with a, a, a cup of liquid, it's time to examine your cooking methods. So um, that might be the way that she did it. It's time to consider something else and this is gonna boost your energy level as well. The best methods for retaining nutrition of food when you cook it are things like steaming. Steaming's best for delicate items, for fish and shellfish, things like that. Roasting, grilling, those are excellent methods for things like beef, chicken, tougher items. But the best and the quickest way to turn healthy ingredients into healthy dishes is saute. This is what I teach straight up to people that don't know how to cook at all. It's the first two weeks of web cooking class, uh, to week two and three. Saute is the stovetop, stovetop method of applying intense heat directly to your food through the pan and the stovetop. The difference between between saute and grandma's pan frying is simply the amount of oil or fat used. In saute, use as little oil as you possibly can, just barely enough to coat the bottom of the pan. The fat in a saute method is used as a mechanical conductor of heat. It doesn't flavor, it doesn't season, it doesn't tenderize, it doesn't do any of these myths because saute cooks so quickly, so intensely. Next tip, stop the breading. Chicken parmesan is just as good with a grilled chicken breast, some tomato sauce, and mozzarella cheese as with the breading. F forget the flour, egg, crumb thing. It adds unnecessary calories. It adds unnecessary fat to your dishes. Just skip the breading and start concentrating on these other methods. Cooking methods that use indirect heat, like roasting, like steaming, or direct heat, like grilling or saute, are the best ones for healthy eating. And being able to duplicate these techniques over and over again with an increasing variety of foods will result in more wholesome, nutritious, and flavorful items for you. Number three, better cooking ingredients and less condiments. Choose real ingredients when you cook, but use less of them. Whether your goal is improving your diet at home, removing fake or inefficient foods is going to be one of the things that really pushes you past the finish line. If you got a sweet taste, you need a sweet taste in your beverage, use real sugar, but use less real sugar. That sugar-like substance, sweetener, your, your body has no idea what it is. And if your body has no idea what it is, the first thing it'll do is store it as fat. It doesn't know how to categorize it. You can slowly train your palate to use less and less of these fake sugars using real sugar and skip the chemicals. The, the same is true for cooking ingredients. One tablespoon of real flavorful olive oil gives you health benefits and enjoyment of food that a full cup of hydrolyzed inverted corn oil can't. Use less real ingredients. If you learn how to make simple sauces as well, you can avoid the additives in jarred sauces. Again, you have no control over the jars that are in the interior of the grocery store. A simple roux with one tablespoon of butter and some flour will give you that great butter taste, that enjoyment. It'll satisfy you so much more than that purchased Alfredo sauce in the jar with modified cornstarch binders, thickeners, and things that you can't even pronounce. My number four tip for healthy eating at home, start portioning and portion correctly. Not every meal needs to be an endless buffet. It's that second helping. It might make you feel better at the table, but that's what's keeping you awake at night. That's what's making you feel restless, tired, lethargic during the day. The average adult will eat about 12 ounces of food. Four to five ounces of protein, like your beef, your chicken, your shrimp, your pork. Three to four ounces of starch, potatoes, pasta, rice. Two to three ounces of vegetables. That's your basic plate. That's what you serve. That's what you eat. You're done eating. There could be more food later, but you don't need to eat more at one sitting. Figuring out these portions starts at the grocery store and it ends just before the cooked food goes on the plate. So if you have a family of four, don't buy six chicken breasts and go around and, and push them because they'll go to waste. You cook four chicken breasts. You cook the certain amount of vegetables. You cook the certain amount of starch. There's no leftovers. You don't feel necessary eating a second, uh, second portion. Force feeding of leftovers because they'll go to waste is, is just another cause of overeating, poor nutrition, and eventually lethargy. Number five, 
stop snacking, all right? Or eat healthier snacks. Respect mealtime as the time to eat your meal. One of my best tips for healthy eating is not to eat in transit. Stop eating in your car. Stop eating engineered foods in a Mylar bag as you move from place to place. I see people eating and walking. There's no need to eat and walk. There simply is where these empty calories are consumed and it'll make you feel lousy for the rest of the day. However, if you know that you're always hungry at 10 a.m. or 3 p.m., prepare for this eventuality with healthier snacks. God, I don't mean carrot sticks and celery sticks. Nobody, nobody can survive on carrot sticks and celery sticks. I mean, switch from potato chips to pretzels. I mean, switch from, from cookies to, to uh, nuts and dried fruits. If you're on a special high protein diet, your snack can be that fifth or sixth chicken breast from last night. You decided to make a leftover, but you didn't eat it last night. You decided to bring it as a snack. Plan your snacks. Don't be surprised by hunger. Your actual meals will be better accepted by your body. It'll give you greater energy. You'll have a happier, healthier outlook on life. Uh, my healthy eating tip at home, sick number six, is drink water. And, and you know I'm not the first person to tell you this. You've heard everybody say it. Soft drinks, drink powders, coffee drinks, energy drinks. They can spike your metabolism. They can dehydrate you. They can confuse your body with artificial sweeteners. They're eventually stored as fat. But this can be the most difficult step for most people. Kicking the Coke habit can be as bad as kicking a Coke habit. No? Not that I know. Um, an addict's an addict is what I'm trying to say. If you feel that you must have a can of soda, well, you need to say to yourself, there's something wrong with that. Uh, nobody's hooked on broccoli, right? It's not like in the afternoon, oh my God, I have to have broccoli. That's because food scientists didn't engineer the broccoli. Food scientists hit on every pleasure system in your brain. That's why you need more Coke. Get rid of the sweetened, the carbonated soft drinks that give you that metabolism crash in the afternoon. I know, water's flavorless but it's crucial to help in the digestion of all these other things that I've told you, these food improvements that we're gonna make. Start replacing everything you drink with water and you'll see immediate results in your energy level. I promise you, buy uh, maybe a cool stainless steel water bottle, you know, for yourself. Um, you save the environment at the same time, get rid of the plastic bottles. Lastly, number seven, not least important, maybe most important, educate yourself. Thank you for watching this video because it shows that you've already done that. But educate yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Michael Pollan. Don't listen to health and wellness gurus. Don't listen to a single one of them. Listen to all of them and then decide what's right for you. It might not be right for you, but you can take bits and pieces from all the uh, expertise and knowledge that's out there. Seek out the knowledge that's going to improve your life permanently. Don't use diet as just a short period of time. Use diet as what you do every day from this point forward. Ask your friends, what are they eating? What kind of healthy meals are they eating? What are their eating habits like? You might <laughs> roll your eyes at some of them and disregard them, but read books on health and nutrition, not fad diets. Subscribe to websites, get newsletters, emails that shows people how to improve their diet and a, a better approach to cooking. This information is all available to you, but nobody is going to come along and simply plant it in your brain. You need to absorb it, nor will anyone give you the motivation to seek out this knowledge. It's all up to you. You need to do it. Find out what your healthy eating goals are. Find the people that have gone before you. Study them. Mirror them. Follow them. Do what they do so that you can do the same. You're not too busy. It's not too hard. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to be educated. You don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to have a cooking blog to do it. You, all you need to do is make small changes in the way that you interact with yourself. What can you do now? What do you believe you can do? What do you believe you can't do. Well, either way, you're right. If you believe you can't do it, you're absolutely right. You can't. If you start out with that belief, either way, you're right. You can only do what you believe you can do, and you definitely won't accomplish what you don't. So you don't need to use all seven of these healthy eating tips right away. Start with one of the tips that's most comfortable for you. Uh, when you start to notice that you're sleeping better, that you have more energy, maybe you're a little nicer to your kids, you've lowered your blood sugar, you've reduced your body fat, you don't have allergic reactions anymore, or you just 
feel better, then you're going to be motivated to try another tip, then another tip, then another tip, and now you've changed your life and your lifestyle, not just your diet. I want to know what changes you're going to make. I want to know what changes you have make. Uh, anything that you've gotten from someone else, something that you've gotten from me, please share. This needs to be a healthier and happier year for everyone, including me who's felt like crap. I'm going to feel better with my own tips. I want you to feel better as well. Tell me what you've done. Leave a comment below and have a great healthy year.